Welcome to Mava Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today's topic is hook injection and um, a specific sample uh, that I found, well, it's a proof of concept sample, that I found in this great article, three ways to inject your code into another process. Now the first proof of concept and uh, uh, the, the the first way to inject into another process that's explained right here is Windows hooks. And one of the proof of concepts is a hook inject X, which we will be looking at. Um, I recommend you read this article to fully understand everything. It's quite, um, quite good. So let's take a look at this. Now, if you have Windows XP, use Windows XP um, because this hook inject X will only work in XP. Uh, the general purpose of this is if you press here on the button inject DLL, the mouse buttons for pressing onto the start button, the, the effect it will be reversed. So if you press the left button, it will show the context menu. And if you press the right button, it will show the start um, menu. So it, it just reverses these buttons as proof of concept. Now this doesn't work and I was interested in why it doesn't work and found one flaw that I could fix. Um, so I didn't check for any other flaws. It's sadly not enough to fix it. Um, okay, so hooks. Hooks are a way to get your code into another into the address space of another process. Usually you cannot access the address space of other processes unless they are shared. But if you set a hook, the uh, procedure that's used by the hook, uh, or the, the hooking procedure resides in a DLL of your choosing. And that, that DLL is mapped into the process space of that other process. So that's how you can make, for instance, you could, if you were a malware author, you could create a malicious DLL and uh, use hook injection to get your malware code into another process. Okay, um, but now about this one, we will be using x64 dbg, which is great. If you're familiar with Oli, you will just, um, get along with it because it's like Oli, just newer and uh, still maintained. So, okay, let's open this up. And this is basically the, that's the starting code of, I think C++, but it will actually start right here. So if you press enter, you get into the actual start of the code that was created by the developer. So we will just press F2 to place a breakpoint right here and run. Okay. Now the first thing it does, it uses find window A and find window X for um, these strings. And um, this attempts to find the start button, the handle for the start button. And I checked what happened here. Like, so that's the find window call, all right, that returns a handle. But if you get down to the find window X call, it will return zero. So it didn't find um, the child bu button for this shell tray WND. And um, that's something I can fix. So let me just try to fix this. Uh, yeah, let's restart it. And um, we can now The way to fix this um, is we can use find window A. Let's take a look at this function here. Um, what works in Windows 7 if, is if you put here the value start and here the value button. Um, so we would have to push the string 
start, then push the string button and then call find window A and forget about that find window X. We don't need that. So let's do this by pressing space bar. You can change the code that's being assembled here. And we will now, we don't have the string start in the binary. So we will push this one instead and just change the string using a hex editor. That's the easiest way I think we can use. And now if check the fill with knobs and then um, cons you have to consider that this takes up more bytes than the push zero. So it will now override the push um, shell tray W and D using this. Yeah, and that's what happened right here. And um, so now we push button 40, 60, 30. Before we do that, also consider it will again override the call to find window A. So we need these opcodes here. You can see these are almost the same as this one, just the, the B0 is a B4 in this case, so we can uh, do that in the next step. Okay, so now it's, um, no, not that. Now we can say following dump the selected address, or we just do this in the hex editor. Oh, I don't care. Uh, so it's FF 15 B4, then it's um, 50, 40, 0, 0, 50, 40, 0, 0. And it worked. So it, it's now showing us that it calls find window with these values. We don't need the, um, we will replace the other call to find window XA with knobs, which means do nothing. Um, the check mark fill with knobs should be set. So this is okay. I don't know if I can do this for several instructions at once. Maybe it's possible. Up. And okay, 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 okay. And the last one also filled with knobs. Okay. And now we made a patch that we could apply. And I would just create a copy of this one here. Copy, paste, and we will rename this to hook inject x patched. Okay. So there is, so if you right click, there's patches and all of these should be selected. We patch a file, we patch now the copy of the file yes we want to replace this and it says fail to save patch file why does it say that i have no idea So we will be checking the um, the section table to find out where the offset of that is. So we have the virtual address 1000, that's a text section, and this translates to the pointer 1000. So it's not really uh, something that we have to so we just look at the file offset 1000 and then replace the values there. Like, you are making me crazy. So, 
and we go to 1000 and now instead of those values we will be writing those 68 38 60 40 zero, zero, and again 68 38 3 Six eight three zero sixty forty zero zero and FF fifteen B four fifty forty and the zero zero and the rest is ninety and we have ninety up until the uh, twenty-two. 2022 so this is here um, then it's a 6a00 so everything before that is 90 90 okay 90 90 90 no one mistake and it's over Looks good. We save that. And now we search for this shell string and we replace this with start. Okay, start. And the rest should be zeros. Okay. We will be closing that. And that's the patched version. We will now check the patched version in the debugger. So open that patched version. And I think we need to go back to that again. Set the breakpoint here. We see it's been patched. It called start and then button. Uh, it calls find window with start and button as strings and uh, so we run uh, here and we get back a value for EAX handle that's 1007A. The question is, is that the correct handle for the start button? Or did we find something else? So for that, I have WinSpy. Also, I can check the actual handle of this button. And here we also see it's 1007A. So we fixed this part of the code. But unfortunately, it's still not enough. So something, something is still not working the way it should. And um, so if we... Um, run it and press inject nothing happens it should change to unmap DLL and this is just not what happens here so if you scroll down a bit you can see that at some point it calls inject DLL we will place a breakpoint on that and run and so if you press inject DLL this will be called so this is the function and um, right here we have a send message a and, and the windows hook x this set windows hook x is what was set the uh, hook procedure which is here so if you look it up set Windows hook X. X stands for extended. So the set Windows hook is another, uh, takes usually less parameters than set Windows hook X. So with the extended versions of the functions, you have more um, control over, yeah, over the things that happen. So here you can see that uh, the first parameter is the type of the hook procedure to be installed and the second 
one is the actual pointer to the hook procedure. So this is the procedure that will be hooked and it pushes for as the type. That means it's this type, the uh, call window proc. So it installs a hook procedure that monitors messages before the system sends them to the destination window procedure. So by going to this um, address right here, we can, I think, press Control G. Yeah, enter this address. Uh, 1040. So we go to the actual hook procedure, and that's this one. Um, yeah, and it will be placing the the button swap somewhere. Let's check what it does. There's set the window long. This is important. Set window long. Set window long A is for ASCII. Set window long W is for um, Unicode string. So they are both doing the same, more or less. Um, so the first parameter is the handle to the window. The second is a zero base offset to the value to be set. And then we have a replacement value. Uh, check this out. So this is the handle to the window. This is the um, value to be set, the, the, the an index. And, oh, come on, stop it. Uh, this is minus four. It's the two's complement for minus four. So we would check this right here. Minus four is uh, this one. Oh, it's a bit in the way right now. Set the new address for the window procedure. So you change the window procedure by using this, um, this value. And um, the new value is then the, this one here, is then the pointer to the Windows procedure, window procedure that's been changed. So here we have the pointer for our new window procedure that's been executed if we press this button. All right, so that's where we get to this. So we press again, control G and we can go to uh, the window procedure that's been replaced that's now been used by the start button and this will do the swapping of left and right mouse values so it this is a switch case uh, well, this is how a switch case looks like in assembly and this will be comparing the message for for the mouse click which which button was clicked and will reverse left and right so it will just uh, for yeah reverse it and then call uh, call window proc which will do the usual stuff that this button does and uh, just with the new message right here okay and that's already it well, as I said, it still doesn't work. Maybe you find out if, if this is even possible this way in Windows 7 or even Windows 10. I don't know yet. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.